what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out 10 wwe legends who selfishly refuse to put over the next generation we've seen this time and time again somebody from the past or whatnot uh get a little bit of a return you know what i'm saying they get a good payday from vince you know to have uh one more match or a series of matches to not put over the potential new stars in the company that you know could use that that rub from beating a legend you know we've seen it a few times especially with goldberg but uh we're gonna check out some of these moments i'm sure goldberg's gonna be on this list a few times or multiple times possibly you know we're gonna check out some of these moments i'm, I'm sure probably hulk hogan's gonna be on this list it's 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 something about vince letting these legends come in here and squash the the new talent or the, the talent that people actually care about and then wonder why you can't make new stars you know like how you gonna make new stars if you keep calling back the old stars to squash the, the new stars you got i don't know it doesn't make sense to me but appreciate all the love and support let's get right into this one man when a wrestler reaches the top of the WWE ladder, it becomes tradition that they help the next generation by working with them in top matches and by eventually Like Mick Foley did. Countless, 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 countless times. Putting them over in a big way. Whereas talents such as The Rock and Chris Jericho have executed this numerous times throughout their careers, uh -huh. there are certain talents who took exception to doing the right thing. These legends should, without question, have lost their match against the younger star, but for whatever various reasons, that WWE legend came out on top. Join us now as WrestleMania mm -hmm. looks at 10 times WWE legends refuse to put over the next generation. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Tis, tis, tis. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, Hulk Hogan versus Randy. There we go. <laughs> I just said it. The Hulkster, brother. <laughs> Now it's crazy to think that Hulk Hogan's last ever WWE match would take place at the 2006 SummerSlam event. Hogan would collide with Randy Orton in one of the top matches on the show and it seemed like a certainty that Orton would attain the victory. And that's it. That was his gimmick too. He was the legend killer. Couldn't kill this legend, brother. Tree. <laughs> However, when Hogan hit the trademark leg drop and pinned Orton 1-2-3, fans were stunned. There was no way that Hogan should have won the match. Orton was on fire as one of WWE's <laughs> top I ain't gonna lie to you. I love Randy Orton RKO'd Hulk Hogan onto the, <laughs> the trunk of a car, bro. That was a funny-ass spot. I... I loved it. And he was going to be a talent that WWE built prominent storylines around for years to come. According to former WWE referee Marty Ellis, there was some debate backstage between Hogan and Orton in relation to who was going over in the match, but eventually WWE, well, specifically Vince McMahon, opted to go with Hogan. Of Why course. Hogan believed he should have gone over in the match is anyone's guess, but this is Hulk Hogan we're talking about, yeah. and we know that putting over the next generation would have been the last thing on his mind. Yes, yep. Number 9, Goldberg versus Kevin Owens. I said it, Heading they into already on the list. It doesn't really seem it. logical that the match for the Universal title would be Kevin Owens defending against Chris Jericho. Owens and Jericho's partnership was the highlight of Raw and the mm -hmm. demand to see them face off at WrestleMania was at an all-time high. When Owens faced- I would have definitely loved that actual, actual, because the storyline there and I would have loved that, but you know, you know. <laughs> off against Goldberg at the Fastlane pay-per-view in 2017, everyone within WWE fandom was under the impression that Goldberg was going to make Kevin Owens look like a huge deal heading into WrestleMania. But sadly, this isn't what WWE had in mind. Thanks to a distraction by Jericho, Goldberg mm -hmm. would squash Owens to win the Universal title. This completely killed the hype for Owens vs yeah. Jericho as it was no longer about the Universal title. So it had lost its spark and Jericho himself had admitted that WWE made a terrible decision. For Goldberg sure. should have spoken up and realized that putting over Owens was the correct move. But it seemed like Goldberg was happy to win a world title in this lackluster manner. What made this even worse was that when Goldberg was interviewed by Digital Spy, Goldberg revealed that he had regrets about the Owens feud, but those regrets aren't related to winning the Universal title. Goldberg simply wishes he could have smashed Owens a couple more times in featured matches. Number 8, Triple A. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. <laughs> Alright, man. H versus Rob Van Dam. 
A Rob Van Dam was immensely popular mm -hmm. with the WWE crowd by September this. 2002. And there were calls from fans as well as some internally in WWE for RVD to finally win the big one. When RVD faced off against Triple H at the Unforgiven pay-per-view in 2002, there was strong desire to see RVD win the match. Mm -hmm. RVD as the face of Raw was what the red brand needed at the time, and Triple H's feud with Shawn Michaels didn't need a world title attached to it to be relevant. It RVD didn't. winning would have been a huge deal. It was the correct move. However, Triple H was heavily involved in backstage politics, so Triple H would be bringing up comments about RVD's promo ability, and at one yeah. point, the game even outright offered to help RVD with his promo work. Unfortunately, according to RVD, this impacted his push, and this act of deviance more than likely led him to not capturing the world title gold in 2002. Mm -hmm. Number 7, John Cena. Yeah, John hey, uh, not John. Um, Triple H back then? Mm. <laughs> Wasn't the biggest fan of him <laughs> back then, but you know, I, I love the guy now. <laughs> but back then, oh man, uh, oh, backstage politics. He literally ran Monday Night Raw. It was, it, it just got up <laughs> abysmal at one point. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Some could say that's being the same, that's the same thing we're dealing with right now with Roman Reigns. So, who knows, you know? <laughs> versus Bray Wyatt. Oh, By the time yep. WWE arrived at WrestleMania 30 in their pay-per-view schedule, Bray, Bray Wyatt won was this one match. of the most interesting characters on the roster. Wyatt was incredibly popular and his feud with John Cena was well received, and this should have resulted in Wyatt pinning Cena on yes. the grand stage. Naturally, this didn't happen, and Cena defeated Wyatt in a move which still confuses fans to this very... Yeah, nah. If John Cena would have did the job for Bray Wyatt, then... It would have made him a mega star. It would have made him a way bigger star because he was super over then. If they would have did the job, his momentum would have skyrocketed because he would have beat John Cena at WrestleMania. That would have made that WrestleMania even that much better. Like what? Bray Wyatt defeating John Cena? Oh my God. At WrestleMania 30, that would have skyrocketed him. Ah, oh, man. Ah, missed opportunities. Day. This was a wrong move as Wyatt needed a victory to solidify himself in WWE, but WWE and Cena obviously had other ideas. At this point in time, Cena was invincible in WWE. Uh -huh. Whilst he didn't explicitly have creative control, you know that would have been able to influence his match outcomes, and this is without question one he should have positively influenced. For sure. Number six, The Undertaker versus Albert. The Undertaker had a reputation for always being willing to put over younger mm -hmm. talent. The dead man had put over a range of talents from the mm -hmm. great Kali to Vladimir Kozlov. However, in 2001, The Undertaker outright refused to put over Albert. According to x mm. when The Undertaker was asked to put Albert over on TV, he simply said no. The Undertaker <laughs> and Albert worked together a total of three times on TV in the summer of 2001 so it was hard to pinpoint what match exactly Albert was supposed to win. But in The Undertaker's defense, randomly losing to Albert would have been a strange move, so yeah. it would have been interesting to discover if WWE had big plans for Albert at that specific time. Yeah, it, it I don't know. I don't know the, the obviously, you know, the main reason why uh, uh, Undertaker was like, nah, I'm not going to do that, because usually he's the guy that will put you over. If they, if they, if they see something in you, and he see it as well, he'll put you over. But with him, he's like, nah, I'm not putting this, I ain't putting this guy over. What? As a victory over the dead man could have been potentially been career altering. Number five, Hulk Hogan versus Triple H. <laughs> the WWE's decision to award Hulk Hogan the title at Backlash in 2002 was a strange one. It can be argued that Hogan was beloved by fans, but this didn't need to transition into a WWE title reign. Triple H was the reigning undisputed champion at the time, and the game had just won the title in the main event of WrestleMania 18. So it seemed like a bizarre decision to make Triple H drop the gold just a few short weeks after obtaining it. Mm. There was no reason that Hogan should have been agreeing to win the matches of this nature at this point of his career, and it was clear that WWE realized the error of their ways. That's funny that Hulk Hogan got one over Triple H at this time. <laughs> Hulk Hogan out backstage politic. Triple H at this time. I want y'all to know how OP Hulk Hogan is backstage. He out politic Triple H out of a title he just won a few weeks prior. That's crazy. They had Hogan drop the title the following month to The Undertaker. Oh my Talk God. about hot potatoing the title. Number four, 
Goldberg versus the Fiend. Oh, I knew Goldberg you were going to be on this the again. Fiend to win the <laughs> title at the Super Showdown event in 2020 was a move that nobody saw coming. The Fiend was presented as this unstoppable monster, but then he was defeated by a semi-retired wrestler. It was truly atrocious booking decision that destroyed the mystique behind The Fiend's character and persona. It was rumored at the time that Goldberg lobbied to win the match backstage, but of these course. rumors have never been confirmed. Nevertheless, it was nonsensical that Goldberg and WWE believed that this was the correct decision. This booking decision highlighted Vince McMahon's habit of losing faith in the current generation. Time and time again, McMahon opted to go back to wrestlers he had previously relied on. It seemed like McMahon had no interest in making the current crop of wrestlers the true stars of his company. Number three, mm -hmm. Triple H versus CM Punk. <laughs> Summer of Punk was an exciting time to be a wrestling oh, fan. Triple H on Summer this Punk list a lot too. Summer fizzled out when WWE <laughs> made some truly ridiculous decisions when it came to Punk's booking. For One of sure. these decisions took place at the Night of Champions pay-per-view in 2011. Punk would face Triple H, and this was a match that Punk, without hesitation, should have won. won. Yeah. Triple H was semi-retired at this point, and it was already a key part of WWE's corporate structure. Unfortunately, WWE had Triple H pin Punk in the center of the ring, and this outcome led to excessive resentment between Punk and the game, as Punk knew that the game should have put him over. Triple H at this point in his career had so much power that he could change any match outcomes Facts. he wanted, and this was one that he needed to step up and do the right thing. I, to this day, I still don't understand why he won that match. It made no sense with the narrative that they're trying to tell with CM Punk for him to lose a no, a non-title, no disqualification match. Why? Why? Made no sense. Number two, John Cena versus the Nexus. All right, all right. Before we get into this, I know I don't know if y'all follow me on Twitter, but you should. There's a guy, there's a John Cena, another John Cena super fan. I mean, super mega ultra fan. And I think on one of my previous videos, we talked about, well, actually, no, I think someone had uh, sent in a clip of John Cena beating, you know, Team Cena beating uh, the Nexus or whatnot. And the dude went on a just a rant talking about how John Cena should have won well team Cena should have won and all this other stuff and John Cena always loses at SummerSlam and all this other stuff hey I know you're gonna watch this video I just want you to know personally I do not care John Cena should have lost that match team Cena should have lost and put over the Nexus I want you to understand John Cena is one of those characters that can take a loss to put over other people. He's still going to be John Cena. The dude even said, oh, he he shouldn't have lost to Daniel Bryan at the time at SummerSlam. He was injured. He should have. He should have won. I'm like, what are you? It's like, I get it. You can be a fan of somebody, but y'all are so delusional. He's like, all y'all do is hate on John Cena. No. We don't. We know he's a certified uh, Hall of Famer. It's, you can't see me, man. He's the GOAT. We get that. He's one of the greatest of all time in WWE. He's carried the company on his back for over 10 plus years. We got it. But at the same time, at some point, John Cena became unbearable. It's, it's, he became unbearable to watch because he was always winning and going over and fused that other wrestlers could have benefited from so i just wanted to say this strictly to you my boy you need to get you some help man it's okay to be a fan of someone but i'm telling you right now john cena doesn't actually know you bro no matter how many times you sit up there and praise him and worship him he does not know you in real life bro separate the difference between being a fan and appreciating someone and being obsessed and upset that john cena didn't win every fucking match in wwe like relax my guy jesus back to the video i had to do that little rant bear the nexus storyline was one of the most captivating uh, storylines of 2010 when team skinny. cena defeated team nexus at the so SummerSlam pay-per-view the storyline and the stable quickly lost its aura the original plan for SummerSlam was to see team nexus get the victory but cena spoke up and believed that he and his team should win the match this was the wrong decision super nexus wrong. members knew it and so did team cena members such as chris jericho and edge in later years, Cena has admitted that he got it wrong, and he's fully aware that the Nexus should have come out of the match with the W. Whilst it doesn't make up for the backstage politics Cena pulled back in 2010, 
it does show that Cena is able to reflect and realize he did the wrong thing. For sure. And number one, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Brock mm -hmm. Lesnar. Mm -hmm. When WWE mm -hmm. wanted Stone Cold Steve Austin to lose to Brock Lesnar on Raw in 2002, Austin was so offended by what WWE was suggesting that he legitimately walked out of the company. Mm -hmm. Whilst Austin had taken issue in the past with putting over talent, he had never reacted in this manner. Austin believed that if he was going to give the rub to Lesnar, it shouldn't be on free TV and it Which should I be agree. built up. Fans continue to be split on if Austin was justified in his actions. Austin has admitted it's one of the biggest regrets of his career and he wishes he just did the job. In relation to Lesnar, he's never shared any ill will towards the WWE legend and it wouldn't be an overreaction to call Lesnar and Austin close personal friends. But yeah. they have it folks. No, I think they're actually cool with each other. I don't think, in, in that situation, and I can get it, you can say he was being selfish because he's like, bro, I'm not about to... I'm not about to put this guy over on a random Monday Night Raw. Like, no, I get that. It's Stone Cold. I don't care what anybody say. I know Vince was in love with his new toy, Brock Lesnar, but it's Stone Cold Steve Austin. You don't have him lose to the next up and coming guy on a random match on a random episode of Raw. That's somebody that should be, if he's going to lose, it needs to be at a pay-per-view. That's something you build up to. Now, some can say that's just an out. He just maybe didn't want to do the job for Brock, but I don't think so because he knows Brock was a legit guy that can go in the ring. Everyone knew that at that time, you know? So I don't think that was the situation. I think it was just, I think for Stone Cold, he felt kind of betrayed by Vince. He's like, bro, I've made you so many millions and this is what you think of me now that I can't really go in the ring anymore. This is what you think of me now. Like, nah, bro. I think that's kind of what it was. It was more so, uh, damn, Vince, you really just want to job me out pretty much. Like, I'm a J-A-G to an upcoming star because now he's your, your new favorite toy. Nah, so that one, I kind of understand. I wish it was. I wish he did handle it a little bit better. But I, 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 for, I get it. I get it. You've been the guy for so long, and then now they're trying to job you out to the next big thing on a random episode of Raw. Nah, put this on a pay per view, build it up. If I'm going to go out, let me go out in glorious fashion like I've always done, you know? So, but comment down below. Let me know if there's any other legends you felt like should have put over the younger talent that wasn't on this list. Most of this list was uh, comprised of Triple H, Goldberg, and um uh, hulk hogan <laughs> the guys with the most backstage politics man that's crazy but i appreciate all the love and support road 250k and i'm still on the speed of youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking in with me see y'all next one peace oh before i go you you john cena super fan bro get you some help john doesn't know you he probably appreciates your support but he doesn't know you my boy relax